Satya, incredibly excited to have you join us once again at the Ability Summit. This isn't your first time. You've been with us many times over the years, whether it was in your role as executive sponsor of the Disability Employee Resource Group or clearly as CEO. I'm, uh, I'm really excited. I know we've got a lot to talk about, um, but I think yeah, this is all about the importance of accessibility, disability inclusion, um, and the leadership that you bring. So let's kick off uh, by walking through a few key areas that are very top of mind right now. Um, and I know we're all looking forward to the insights that you're going to give. But before we do that, let me just give a quick description because we are recording this virtually. Um, I'm actually at home. I'm in my lounge with my faithful grand piano behind me wearing my favorite claret shirt. The future is accessible. Satya, let me uh, hand to you to give a brief description. Yes, absolutely. Thanks so much, Jenny. My name is Satya Nadella. I'm wearing glasses and a blue button-down shirt, and I'm standing in front of my bookshelf. And I'm very much looking forward to discussing the topic that's so important to Microsoft and to myself personally. Fantastic. Well, let's get going. Satya, this is our 11th Ability Summit, and you've been an incredibly strong advocate for accessibility for many, many years now. This has been, in many ways, an extraordinary year. If we reflect back on 2020 and the start of 2021, it's had an unprecedented impact on the disability community. I, I really want to know, what do you see as the opportunity for Microsoft as a member of society working on the inclusive recovery? No, absolutely, Jenny. To start off, I want to first say a big thank you for having me at the Ability Summit. Um, and thank you to everyone joining us uh, today to have these very critical conversations. Uh, it's great to have so many people talking about what it means to include people of all abilities in our economy, in our society, in our workforce at Microsoft and beyond. And over the past, i say several years, work of this community has been just tremendous. Each of you have helped drive progress, drive that much needed change. And this work's been an inspiration for many of the most successful product efforts and has helped us create, I would say, that more inclusive accessible culture uh, at Microsoft. And when it comes to accessibility and Microsoft's role, Jenny, it all starts with our mission. Our mission to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more means empowering more than 1 billion people around the world with disabilities. And we believe that inclusion leads to innovation. Uh, the more we understand deeply how to empower everyone is when we, in fact, advance technology to benefit everyone uh, that much more. And it's core to our journey to build more inclusive products. And from whether it's the eye control feature in Windows 10, learning tools in Microsoft 365, the Seeing AI app, Xbox adaptive controller, we've seen incredible examples over the last multiple years on how people uh, with disabilities have been able to use our technology to more fully participate in both work and life and how every user has benefited in this process. I'd say the pandemic has only amplified the need for accessible technology and inclusion uh, as people with disabilities have been disproportionately impacted. Uh, we now have an opportunity to use technology to create uh, the more inclusive teams and workplaces. Uh, one of the data points, for example, is captioning in Teams has been a, a, bit, a game changer, right? For many, in fact, the usage has grown 30 times uh, just in one month. And uh, we are excited about what other learnings we can apply to this area. I think that's just fantastic perspective. And yes, it was incredible to see that Teams growth, April versus February. 30x increase in one month. I think if if anything speaks to the power of accessibility and the virtualization of a workforce, um, I, I think it's that. We uh, Let's move into the next chapter. We recently announced our, our next stage in this journey uh, with accessibility at Microsoft, which is a new ambition to help close the disability divide, the gap in inclusion for people with disabilities, uh, whether that's in education, employment. Why, why is this so important for Microsoft to be making this investment at this time? Whether it's lower employment and education rates or higher poverty rates, 
uh, I would say people with disabilities currently face enormous uh, disparities. Uh, that's why the World Bank rightfully calls this the disability divide, uh, but it goes much beyond this. People with disabilities represent one of the world's largest untapped talent pools, and we need to create an inclusive workplace that nurtures this talent. Our announcement focuses on three key areas. First, ensuring that our technology is accessible by design and making assistive technology more affordable. Second, building a workplace that better represents people with disabilities. This starts with the feedback loop between acquiring skills and credentials and connecting people with job opportunities. And finally, we need to create an inclusive workplace for people with disabilities. Uh, at Microsoft, we're broadening our own inclusive hiring programs and empowering our partners and suppliers to do the same. Um, so that's sort of what we intend to do. Well, I'm excited and I'm really proud to be part of a company that's stepping in to hopefully disrupt this disability divide, the gap in societal inclusion that really hasn't materially shifted in 30 years. I think it's gonna be a really, really exciting and very important time. In fact, um, I think we should probably pause just for a second and take a minute to look at one of the partnerships that's come out of this new strategy and this new effort. This is a recorded video uh, with a, an incredible organization called Seeability in the UK. Let's roll video. Three people at a table. Seeability was founded in 1799. We have been providing ambitious support for people with sight loss, learning disabilities, and autism. Seeability, working in partnership with Microsoft, offers us the opportunity to provide development opportunities so that we can fulfill our vision of equality and inclusiveness. And the programme also gives employees in social care the ability to learn new skills to further their careers and have a greater sense of purpose. Enhancing people with learning disabilities, digital skills was an innovative approach. So when the pandemic happened, the fears were, how are we going to help those that are going to be isolating or shielding? It was a matter of quickly establishing what is the best way that we could actually continue to support people. So through the National Lottery Coronavirus um, Support Fund, we set up Creating Connections in partnership with Learning Disability England. Our aim was to really get people connected. We are a step ahead of the curve and supporting people with learning disabilities in order to bridge that digital gap. It's about accessibility and actually we continue to try and make sure that everything that we do is accessible for the people that we support. It's about giving them the time to support them to learn to connect to things like Microsoft Teams and, and use Microsoft products. With Microsoft's involvement, we've received additional accessibility training. What this has then led to is, is a real kind of um, upskilling of our own workforce, uh, which can then be passed on to everybody that we support. I am neurodiverse myself, so have a fair amount of lived experience in terms of using assistive technology and just hugely see the value of it for everyone that we work with. Without the tech, I don't think I'd be functioning as I can today. I use uh, speech to text. It means that I can take part with all my colleagues. There's no difference really in what I can access in terms of communications to everybody else. Being able to talk through things like Teams, reduces the amount of travel time, reduces the, the environments that I have to be in. From a sensory and processing perspective, this is a lot more comfortable. Creating connections, a really great success in the, the sheer volume of people that now have, um, have the skills to be able to access things online, whether it's to talking with their friends and family, through to being able to actually look for a job or, or go for a job interview. Our Creating Connections programme, in partnership with Microsoft, will help to bridge that digital divide for people with disabilities. And I'm not only excited for us as a charity, but I'm also excited for people with disabilities and their families about what the future can hold. Microsoft. Microsoft, creating connections, seeability. So this is a technology-led strategy. Amazing video, incredible partnerships, but let's talk a little bit more about the nerdery and the ambition to be accessible by design, which is a really purposeful strategy to embed
people with disabilities into the fabric of our products, into our services, and lean into that mission of nothing about us without us. I know you really love this stuff, Satya. So what inspires you with recent innovations that you've been and you've seen coming and uh, what's coming up? Absolutely, yeah. We must build accessibility, as you said, by design as a foundation of our products rather than just bolting it on afterwards. Uh, that's why I'm so excited about a few of our recent announcements. Um, I'd say that add to the core functionality of some of our most uh, popular products. Uh, for example, in Office, uh, that new accessibility checker, I love it. I mean, the prompt you to fix accessibility issues in your documents or emails. Our aim is to make, I would say, accessibility checker as you ubiquitous as the spell checker is today. Uh, as a platform and tools company, Jenny, we know that our most perhaps important contribution will come, not just from our own actions, but from empowering our customers around the world. Uh, we want to help any developer ensure accessibility is always included at the start of the development cycle. Our accessibility insights tool uh, helps developers solve uh, accessibility issues before they reach customers. So these are a couple of few examples that I'm really excited about. I, I, I love the uh, accessibility checker. I mean, it, it's right next to spell check. So having that goal, I love how you put it, ubiquitous as spell check is today, that's gotta to be the goal. And I love that the, even the simplicity of some of these features that the teams are coming out with, um, if you send a large email in Outlook, you will be prompted and nudged if it's not accessible. And I think that's, it's not just about how we empower people with disabilities, it's how we empower us all to be more inclusive in everything that we do. That could impact millions and millions of emails every single day, it's, it's super exciting. So big grand goals, but I, I want to close by taking us um, onto a personal note and really end on, on a personal note. You over the years, uh, and we've worked together a long time, um, you know, back when you were sponsor of the Disability ERG and, and coming in and writing Hit Refresh, you've talked, you've written about your personal journey with disability as a, as a father, as a parent, and just the importance of this to you on that level. Um, you and your wife are making just an incredibly generous and huge donation to an organization right here in our backyard, Seattle Children's. Now, I know you've had a long relationship with the organization, but I'd love for you to share why was this important to you, to your family, and what do you hope really comes from this? Thanks, Jenny, uh, for that question. Anu and I and our family have a deep uh, connection to Seattle Children's, uh, beginning with the birth of our son, Zeng, who was born with cerebral palsy. We spent a lot of time, I've spent a lot of time at Seattle Children's and come to rely on their expertise, their care, their resources. Uh, and we've experienced the challenges of uh, ra raising a child uh, with complex medical needs, the anxieties that go with that. Uh, and we're excited uh, to be building on that long-standing relationship today with a new commitment focused on two key areas, uh, advancing precision medicine in neuroscience and youth uh, mental health care. Uh, precision medicine represents, I believe, a revolution in how children with neurological conditions uh, will be diagnosed and treated at the Seattle Children's. Uh, they're at the forefront of this approach. Uh, it means a child's care team uh, is made up of clinicians, data scientists, engineers, and researchers who all can work together uh, to develop the treatments unique to every child. Um, and as you know, this month is the Mental Health uh, Awareness Month, and uh, we're also focused on transforming uh, mental and behavioral health care for children and teens. Uh, so we're very encouraged by Seattle Children's approach. Uh, to reaching more kids in crisis and addressing gaps in services and to support more families. So we are very thankful for the opportunity. Well, thank you, Satya. Uh, and I have to say this on behalf of the community of employees and way beyond that, thank you for your leadership, for your passion, for your commitment, and to both you and Anu for your personal dedication to driving new futures. 
Um, it's incredibly impactful. And on behalf of everyone at the Ability, thank you for joining us this morning and you've given us a good lens of what we need to do to go forward. Thank you so much, Jenny, and thank you for your leadership. As we move forward, I can't wait to see all that we will be able to do together uh, with this community as we work to create uh, a more inclusive, accessible workplace, society, and a world. So thank you all very, very much. Fantastic. Let's close that disability divide. Thank you, folks.